Hello folks, welcome back to the shop. So, another video about the CNC lathe. Um, I've now gotten a little bit familiar, a little bit more familiar with it. Or a little bit... Uh, or a little bit less not familiar with it. Uh, I made a very simple and crude repair to these lights. You can see they have a tiny knot. Uh, which was on the inside of this panel and I just flipped it to the outside so now that now they cannot fall through I guess all of these little LEDs had a had a cover like this, but they have fallen off So now the lights do not fall uh, on the wrong side of the panel anymore And something else I actually made a video about it I actually made a video about it, um, uh, about the gearbox of this lathe. So when I first got it running, uh, it was making a knock, knock, knock sound when it was turning. And um, mm, I was, uh, I almost got a heart attack to begin with, because I thought it would be something pretty bad, really bad. I mean, it sounded like a gear was missing uh, teeth. Um, and I actually opened uh, opened the gearbox and found out that the oil was very bad, extremely bad. And when I saw the oil, I was completely sure that there was something wrong with the gearbox. So I drained the oil, and uh, and then I opened opened the, the cover of the gearbox and looked inside, and it actually looked brand new. So nothing wrong there. I poured in some new oil and put the cover back on and uh, it was still making the same sound and uh, then I started looking at uh, or uh, looking at closer to the problem um, when I put my hand here on the cover I mean on the sheet metal uh, it was kind of like someone something was knocking uh, on the covers and then I found out that Right there you can see uh, this is the spindle right here and it has a tiny notch in here somebody has uh, pride on it with a screwdriver and that was actually making contact with the cover plate which is right here there's only like a two millimeter tiny tiny gap and why I didn't hear the sound at the seller's place was because uh, the covers must have shifted when we when we lifted the machine because the lifting straps were uh, taking heavy contact against uh, the sheet metals so so and that was a almost a heart attack <laughs> but luckily i found a, um, an easy solution for the problem and uh, something else um, I uh, made sure that oil makes its way everywhere and I also was able to check uh, the Z-ways almost all the way until the left and they look very very good uh, and there is oil coming everywhere so starting from the oil pump which is right behind here uh, I took off the hoses and as you can see there's some good amount of oil coming out of the pump and then I went to the top of the machine and uh, took off some oil lines and oil is coming everywhere and also every place seems lubricated. So seems to be a good amount of oil everywhere. And what I want to do now is uh, start dialing in some tools. And I think it's time for the ceremonial moment of first chips. And again, I want to share it with you. So, we have the low gear in, which is called M40. And M41 is high gear. So, we type in S1200 and M Four, which is 1200 rpm and spindle counterclockwise 
because uh, this is meant to use left hand pulling so the spindle is always turning counterclockwise so and a funnel always needs EOB and of block which is I think this is called a half dot and then we push insert and start oh chuck let's see mm. okay let me figure this out okay so I had tested the switch right here uh, because I wasn't sure which way the switch would be uh, it's house, it says outside and inside on the switch but I don't know whether it's, it means uh, if the chalk is used in the inside or if the workpiece is held on the inside of it so it turns out it's, it means how the chalk, I mean how the workpiece is being held so it's now outside so the workpiece is held from outside and the chalk is holding from inside not sure which way it's more uh, which way it makes more sense so no more error um, so we type in uh, s 1200 m 4 n of block and insert and start and we get the spindle running and we can override it here if we like to and you can see the lights flickering when I increase the speed uh, my fuses must be very close to blowing um, so and we switch to manual mode and we have some feed so let's feed closer actually in order to work still so far let's rapid this is 25% rapid now feeding closer and the feed rate can be set with this switch and now we switch to handle so we can use the pulse wheel manually and uh, we check our position and right here we're watching this one and I can already tell this is off because the stock diameter is 50 millimeters and it should be now showing something like 52 and because this coordinate is the same as the work diameter so now we just fit it in and take a touch There we go, and jump back, and it's now 45, so back to handle, and let's go for 54 and a half. And I think I'm gonna use the, the feed and not the pulse wheel because it gives a more uh, uniform feeding speed uh, let's see let's first go this way and see if the feed is I think it's too high let's lower it down a little bit okay that's better let's go with this one The very first chips. Oh -ho. And what I really don't like, um, I think 
I may just not have figured it out yet. I don't think there is a way to... Yes, there is a way to stop the spindle. And also, we can start it here. Okay. So, we just have to be in the manual mode. Uh, until now, I thought uh, you always have to go to MDI and program and program M5, which is spindle stop. So, I thought there would be no physical way to stop the machine. But, uh, luckily there is. And look at that finish, it's quite beautiful. And that's, that's really not a, really not a, um, a bad indication, I think. So, I guess this is the main moment of the video. And what I'm gonna do now, I think I'm not gonna show it to you. I'm gonna go back to uh, the same position where I was, which I don't remember anymore, but luckily I captured the video so I can recheck it. So I'll go back to that uh, Z, and I mean X, and then I'm gonna measure the workpiece right here, the diameter that I just turned, and then I'm gonna uh, use the measuring function to record the length of the tool. If you're not a CNC person, you will understand nothing of this, but uh, maybe some of you do. And I'm also kind of on the verge of understanding any of this. <laughs> but it's coming slowly. It's uh, quite a bit different than running a VMC. Okay. So. Um, I want to thank you for watching again. And um, it's now been a full month since the Patreon uh, Patreon thing started and I already have figured out uh, a first video about that and I hope this weekend I will film and edit it and I can already reveal to you it's gonna be about testing drill bits I have nine different five milli five millimeter drill bits which I'm gonna be drilling 200 holes with each and I'm gonna do it with the VMC and the drill will be in a collet so it's gonna be a very rigid setup and it's gonna be very uniform very sane test for each drill so it really should provide some interesting information about different drills and I'm gonna drill through a 15 millimeter uh, thick uh, block of steel uh, first with coolant and then without coolant and see which drills can make the 200 holes I think uh, some of them will overheat from not having coolant and some of them will keep going. So, uh, so I think uh, that's all for now. And what I can do now, I have actually some chips in the conveyor. Finally, I get to use the chip conveyor for something. first chips coming out of the conveyor. Let me pause here and get back to you. There they go. And this is where the uphill starts. Here they come. You can see the conveyor belt has actually taken quite a bit of beating. It's been fixed in several places by welding. Oh, the first chips made by me on this lathe, coming from the chip, chip conveyor. Okay, I think it's time to stop playing and actually do something. Okay, thanks for watching and hope you liked.